Last Stand at Sea, 1942, the USS Edsall Mystery, written and narrated by Mark Felton. This is an audio-only episode. This story took place during the Japanese invasion of the Dutch East Indies, today's Indonesia, following their attacks on Pearl Harbor, Hong Kong and British Malaya. One of the great mysteries of the Second World War unfolded at sea, just as the Japanese were landing on Java in the Dutch East Indies. At the end of the war in 1945, the US Navy was unable to account for the disappearances of four of its destroyers. Listed as missing, presumed lost, the Navy simply had no idea what had happened to the vessels and their crews. One of these vessels was the rather elderly USS Edsall, the ship vanishing during operations off the island of Java in March 1942. It was 1952 before anguished relatives were first informed that a handful of crewmen's bodies had been discovered on Salibis Island in the Dutch East Indies, and 1980 before the full story of the vessel's end came to light from Japanese sources. It was a story of great courage by the crew of the Edsel, who literally went down fighting against overwhelming odds, and of the murder of survivors from the gallant little ship by the Japanese. The Edsel was a Clemson-class destroyer launched in 1920, an old four-stacker, named for a gallant American seaman named Norman Edsel, who had died attempting to save his wounded commander during a shore action on Samoa in 1899. Armed with four-inch guns, the 314-foot-long vessel had served all over the world before the Second World War erupted in the Far East, serving with particular distinction off Turkey when they expelled Anatolian Greeks from Izmir in 1922. In 1925, the Edsall had joined the Asiatic fleet, becoming a regular visitor to the Philippines, Hong Kong, Shanghai and Japan, helping to protect American interests up and down the China coast. When the Japanese bombed Pearl Harbor in 1941, the Edsall was based at Balikpapan, an oil port on the southeast coast of Dutch Borneo. With a British liaison officer aboard her, the Edsall was one of the ships that had searched for survivors from the battleship HMS Prince of Wales and the battle cruiser HMS Repulse, sunk by Japanese aircraft on the 10th of December as they invaded Malaya. The Edsall, under Lieutenant Commander J.J. Nix, sailed to Surabaya and joined a force led by the heavy cruiser USS Houston, charged with escorting Allied supply ships to the northern Australian port of Darwin. It was whilst employed on this task that the Edsall participated in the sinking of the Japanese submarine I-124 on the 20th of January 1942 alongside Australian naval forces. Commander Nix was awarded the Legion of Merit for this action. The Edsall was damaged on the 19th of February 1942 when one of her own depth charges exploded on her deck while she was conducting another anti-submarine attack. Leaking badly, the Edsall limped into Talapjat for repairs. She was a fast ship, capable of sprints of up to 35 knots, but the damage and hasty repairs cut her top speed, which was ultimately to contribute to her demise at the hands of the Japanese. Japanese forces were advancing rapidly through the Dutch East Indies, with very little to stop them. The USS Langley, the American Navy's first aircraft carrier now converted into an aircraft transport ship, was loaded with 32 Curtis P-40 Warhawk fighters from Australia and ordered to deliver them, along with their pilots, to Java in an effort to wrest back air supremacy from the Japanese. The Edsall and another destroyer, the USS Whipple, were assigned as escorts. The little flotilla of ships was spotted by the Japanese fleet on the 27th of February, and a strong aerial attack witnessed the Langley and all the precious aircraft destroyed by bombs. The two escorting destroyers saved 485 men from the Langley and then finished off the historic ship with torpedoes and gunfire, before rendezvousing with the oiler USS Pecos at Christmas Island. The survivors, except the 32 pilots, were offloaded onto the Pecos, 
the Edsel receiving instructions to take them to Dalapjat, where it was hoped aircraft would be waiting for them. Nix set a course north towards Java, and that was the last anyone heard of the Edsel and her crew for ten years. The truth, when it began to surface in the early 1950s, and in detail in 1980, was an amazing story of a last stand at sea. Japanese naval landing forces and Imperial Army troops had begun landing on the north coast of Java on the 1st of March 1942, and it was clear that Allied resistance on the island would soon cease. The U.S. Navy sent radio messages to its vessels at sea to turn around and rendezvous south of the island and then steam and company back to Australia. Nix evidently received these new instructions, for when the Japanese came upon his ship, he was heading south. The Japanese were one step ahead of Allied naval forces, and Admiral Chuichi Nagumo and the carrier strike force had entered the Indian Ocean to block any Allied naval withdrawal to Australia. Aside from the carriers, Suryu and Akagi, Nagumo's force included the battle cruisers Hiei and Karishima, and the heavy cruisers Tone and Chukuma, a massively formidable fleet the Allies were incapable of matching. On the afternoon of the 1st of March 1942, as Japanese troops waded ashore on Java, the Tone identified a lone warship 15 miles to the northeast of her. The Chukuma spotted the same vessel 12 minutes later, and both heavy cruisers soon identified the warship as an American vessel, probably a light cruiser or a destroyer. Aboard the Tone, officers were convinced from her silhouette that the ship on the horizon was an Omaha-class light cruiser. At 5.30pm, the Chukuma's huge 8-inch guns opened fire at a range of 21,000 yards, the heavy shells screaming over the Edsel, the fountain in the ocean all about her. In a display of supreme courage, and knowing that he had nowhere to run to, Nix turned his vessel head-on to the Chukuma, and began powering his vessel towards her until his own puny 4-inch guns were in range. It may also have been a ploy to frighten the larger Japanese ship off, as the charging Edsel looked as though she was lining up for a torpedo attack. Both ships failed to register a single hit with their guns, and Nix turned away. A rain squall came up, and Commander Nix used this and a smokescreen to hide from the Japanese cruisers, the Edsel disappearing from view at 6pm. The two battle cruisers, Hiei and Karishima, had now joined the hunt for the Edsel, but Nix tried to use his ship's greater maneuverability to outsmart the Japanese gunners. Because the Japanese warships were firing at extreme range, Nix would have about one minute between observing the Japanese gun flashes on the horizon and the shells actually arriving. By constantly changing his course and speed, Nix hoped to save his ship and escape. The tactic worked for a while, as frustrated Japanese gunners aboard the Hiei and Karishima fired off 297 14-inch and 132 6-inch shells at the weaving Edsel, only scoring one hit. The gunners aboard the Tone and Chikuma were even worse shots, firing 844 8-inch and 62 5-inch shells, none of which struck the American ship. A thoroughly annoyed Nagumo decided to change his tactics, and he ordered an airstrike from the carrier Suryu, which launched nine dive bombers, and the Akagi, which sent aloft a further eight. The aircraft soon made their presence felt, and between 6.27 and 6.50 p.m., the Edsel was struck by several bombs that rendered her a blazing wreck. With a final effort, the Edsel's bows were turned towards the rapidly advancing enemy, before the engines died and the ship was adrift. The Japanese, however, now closed in on the helpless ship and recommenced their gunnery from almost point-blank range. The Chukuma demolished the destroyer's bridge and blew off the ship's stern, which caused the Edsel to sink at 7pm, so about 430 miles south of Java. The Edsel's normal complement was 101 officers and men, swollen by the addition of 32 pilots aboard her when she sank. 
It has been surmised that the vast majority of the crew were killed during the aerial assault, and many more when the Chikuma came alongside and unleashed her massive firepower. Many would have drowned when the Edsall sank, but it stands to reason that a great many men probably made it into the water. Reports vary, but according to the log of the Chikuma, she only rescued between five and eight survivors, leaving the others to their fate. Whether the Japanese followed their usual practice of machine-gunning other survivors is not known, but certainly some men were abandoned to lonely deaths in shark-infested waters as the Japanese force sailed away. For those rescued by the Japanese, all of them were brutally interrogated aboard the Shikuma virtually as soon as they were clear of the water, as the Japanese showed no compassion to fellow sailors who had fought heroically against huge odds, beating information out of them with alacrity. The survivors gave their tormentors the name of their ship, which the Japanese entered as Edosuru in the ship's log, and also explained how Commander Nix had been able to outfox the combined firepower of two battle cruisers and two heavy cruisers for over an hour. The prisoners were then corralled below in airless compartments, along with 25 other prisoners, merchant seamen from a Dutch freighter sunk earlier as the Jukuma sailed to Celebes Island in the Dutch East Indies. After their arrival at Kandari Prisoner of War Camp, the survivors from the Edsall disappeared. In 1952, a unit from the U.S. Army War Graves Commission followed leads given to them by locals on Celebes, and they began excavations at the abandoned and overgrown Kandari camp. Gruesome discoveries were soon made by the Army investigators, revealing a little more of the story of the Edsall survivors. An unmarked grave was discovered containing the decapitated bodies of five American sailors whose identity tags showed them to be crewmen from the Edsall. The bodies of Sidney Amory, J. R. Cameron, Horace Andrus, Larry Vandever and Donald Watters lay piled on top of one another, evidence that the men had all been executed by beheading with swords. Nearby, the army investigators discovered an even larger mass grave containing the decapitated bodies of the 25 Dutch seamen who had been held alongside the Edsall survivors aboard the Chikuma. Why the Americans and Dutch sailors were executed remains a mystery to this day, and perhaps more survivors' bodies have yet to be discovered at Kendari or elsewhere. The Japanese have remained tight-lipped about the details of the destruction of a gallant Edsall and its brave crew. One possible reason why the Edsall survivors were executed in such a ritualistic way probably stems from the loss of face Admiral Nagumo's fleet had suffered in attempting to sink one single little American destroyer. The Imperial Japanese Navy often took out its frustrations upon those enemy soldiers, sailors and airmen unfortunate enough to fall into its clutches. You have been listening to Last Stand at Sea, the USS Edsall Mystery, written and narrated by Dr. Mark Felton. For a wide variety of military history videos, please visit my other YouTube channel, Mark Felton Productions. You can also help to support both of my channels through PayPal and Patreon. Details in the description box below. Music